Hello, I'm Daryl Goodman, a director at Achieve It Solutions, and today's presentation will focus on how Resolve can help your inventory counting process for SAP Business One. Here you can see I'm logged into our WMS counting menu, and in the counting menu, you can see I have four different processes available. Now, this particular resolution is designed to look like a tablet. The way that Resolve WMS works is, is that we are device agnostic. We can run on Apple iOS, on Android, on Windows devices, basically anything that can support HTML5, and we have what's called a responsive design. So when the device is size to work like a tablet, you might see a display like this. A more traditional scanner or a cell phone, it might look like this. And of course, you can always go work on a laptop and work in a full screen resolution. This automatically resizes and allows you to pick the appropriate device for the task at hand and has your choice of hardware at different levels. Now within the counting menu, you can see, as I mentioned, we have four distinct tasks. We have the ability to do a bin count. A bin count will allow me to create a count record for a bin in my warehouse and immediately adjust the inventory. This is is typically used by a warehouse supervisor as the adjustments do not require any additional review and allows me to correct any inventory discrepancies that might take place. To perform a bin count, simply scan the bin location that you'd like to work in and then scan the items that appear in the bin. If the item appears more than once, you can simply scan the item again or you can edit a quantity by simply using your stylus or touchpad to be able to tap on it, edit, and then changing the quantity. Either way, when you're satisfied, simply press finish and the inventory in SAP is updated. In addition to doing bin counts, you can also perform a cycle count. You'll notice that our cycle count screen looks very similar to the bin count screen. And this is by design. All screens are similar to encourage rapid learning at ease of use. Once again, to be able to perform a cycle count, we'll simply identify the bin that we'd like to count and now we'll be able to look up the items that are eligible to be counted. As you can see, only a handful of items are eligible to be counted, and this is determined by the cycle count information inside of SAP Business One. For example, here in our Miami warehouse, we've identified this as a high value product, and you can see that it's scheduled to be counted today. The cycle count codes are user defined inside of SAP, where you can see I can define any recurrence that I require. This one occurring quarterly on the second day of each quarter. However, it can be done daily, weekly, on specific days of the week, and so on. Once you've selected the item, simply enter the quantity that you'd wish to count, and you can continue to scan or select additional items. If you try to scan an item that's not eligible for cycle counting, the system will advise you and block you from counting that product. At any point during the count or any other time while using the WMS, you can always use the quick search to be able to get more information about the product. So if I'd like to see the item that wasn't eligible to be cycle counted, I can simply scan the item code into the quick search and get information about it. So first, I can see where it's supposed to be in the warehouse. If I want to see other information, such as where it's located in other warehouses, I can simply click the checkbox to do so. I can look and see the serial and batch information, and even details, such as the item's full description, the units of measure, the quantity for the units of measure, and the alternate barcodes. The item's picture is also available, and you can click on it to get a larger view if you need help identifying the product. Additional information is available, such as the warehouse quantity availability, any attachments that might come from the item master, license plate information, and then transactional information, such as sales orders, purchase orders, and so on. When you are done, you simply hit finish, and SAP is updated. Inside of SAP, there are two different types of inventory counting documents. The cycle count that we just completed is an inventory counting document. This document document allows us to review the results of our counting and tells us who performed the counting, the time that the counting occurred, what items and quantity were counted, as well as being able to have a reference showing us that this was done inside of SAP. We now know that the system required one and we counted two, so we have a variance and that we're going to adjust this by one unit. You can now make additional modifications, send this item back to be reviewed, or add an additional counter to the system. Note that the timestamp is actually important because it will keep track of inventory as of the time that you perform the scan, allowing allowing you to have subsequent transactions not impact your inventory count should you want to count your cycle counts while still having an active warehouse and not freezing your bin location. When you're satisfied with your counting, you'll simply copy your counting to an inventory posting, which will make a final adjustment, including any cost variances, GL accounts, and so on. For example, if we go back one record, you can see the inventory posting that occurred when we did the bin post earlier today. Returning to WMS, you can see that in addition to cycle counting, we also have a cycle count by item. When cycle counting by item, the primary driver will be the item number. When I scan or select the product that's eligible to be counted, I can then scan and identify the bin quantities that are available. Note that I can just simply scan a bin location or use the lookup to see all of the locations where the inventory is supposed to appear in stock. Here you can see I can simply select the bin location that I'd like to count and indicate how many are found, or I can scan a bin 
the same thing. However, in this case, since the item was the primary driver, if I finish this count, any bin locations that I did not count that the system has this inventory will be adjusted to have a count of zero, thus adjusting the inventory out. SAP is updated. Our final counting type is a physical count. A physical count typically occurs at predetermined times, such as year end. In this particular case, it would be typical for one or more counters to go and count all of the inventory in the warehouse. In this particular case, we're going to be using the scanner to go count several bin locations as I've been assigned an aisle. Here you can see I can simply scan the bin code and then begin to process the items that I'd like to count. Again, I can identify products and scan them individually. If I scan something inadvertently, I can delete a row. And if I would like to edit a quantity, I can click on the row, edit, be able to update the quantity. This, of course, can all be controlled by security settings. I can also turn off my quick scan feature, which will allow me to be able to scan the product and simply enter a quantity. Some items may be batch or serial managed. In this case, I can scan the item, scan or enter a quantity, and I am prompted for a batch number. In this case, I can simply scan the batch number, scan the quantity, and proceed. Additionally, I have the option to skip the item and scan just the batch number, which will identify the product for me. Again, I can enter the quantity that is required. And here you can see, again, it's going to prompt me for scanning that batch quantity. The same is true for serialized products, where I can specify again the quantity, and now scan each of the three different serial numbers. When complete with this bin location, I can finish, which will update SAP, and proceed to the next bin location. Now, in addition to using the individual barcodes, you can also use a 2D barcode, which will have multiple pieces of information, in this case, identifying product, quantity, and serial number being counted. As you can see with the single scan, it's counted a quantity of two and identifies the two different serial numbers that were in the 2D barcode. This is useful when counting pallets or cases of serialized information. Once again, I hit finish and it will update SAP. If I need to count a bin that is empty, I can simply scan the bin and press finish. Once again, with inside SAP, an inventory counting document is created showing me the results of my physical inventory. Here you can see the products that I've counted and any product that has a variance, such as I did not find this apple juice, it will show me again the quantity it was supposed to be in the warehouse, the fact that I counted zero and the adjustment will be made. As you can see, the inventory counting process is very fast and simple to use when working with both SAP Business One and resolve. If you'd like more information or have any questions, please feel free to reach us at www.achievits.com. Thank you.